Fine. So I'll create one topology over here, and uh, might be that I'm already having that one. So this is going to be your diagram now. So as you can see in this diagram that we are having one service provider which is BT Buddhist Telecom. This is your service provider, right? This BT is working here as a service provider. Now, the second thing is like with this service provider, you have two customers connected. One is Microsoft and another one is Yahoo and both of them are in, I mean to say both customers are, ha are having two different sites like Microsoft is having New York and Gurgaon sites so Microsoft will be interconnected I mean these two sites will be interconnected with uh, with the help of BT because uh, at both ends Microsoft have taken connection or you can say MPLS link from BT in same manner yahoo is also having two different offices over here london and yes. paris so because it is having london and paris so again these two sites are connected with each other with using bt the very first thing that i will implement here mpls with bgp without using vrf are you getting my point or not without using vrf and then i will show you that if you do not use vrf in mpls then again there will be a big 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 problem you understand so let me prove that first of all so let me have the console of r1 then r2 then r3 Interface go back one First of all, I have, to do, I have to do the configuration of its internal network. I mean, BT is internal network. Internally, it is using area. And then, on the top of the OSPF, we can configure indirect BCP neighborship. It's not it. So, BCP AS100 is running for BTs. I mean, British Telecom, right? BT. So, you do one thing, move on R1. Say router OSPF1, router ID is going to be 111, S1 by 0, IP OSPF1 area is going to be 0. Any problem? So on both interfaces, I mean on to the loopback of R1 as well as on its one interface, we have enabled OSP. You check it out. Then move on R2 and on R2, router ID will be 2222 and then enable OSPF on all interfaces of R2 and area will be 0 you see then on R3 router SP1 router ID will, will be 333 interface S1 by 0 as I can show you these interfaces as well S1 by 0 
IP of SPF1 area is going to be 0 and once again it is 0. Any problem? Sure. Good. After implementing OSPF, now we have to implement MPLS in this network. Right now, if you move on R1, show MPLS forwarding. Does it have anything over here? To enable OS, I mean this MPLS, go to interface and then what do you need to configure? MPLS IP. But there is one another option also available by which you can enable MPLS onto your interfaces of your devices, right? Like router OSPF 1. You can say MPLS LDP autoconfig. Now, meaning of this command is, I mean the meaning of this command is what? Like MPLS will get enabled on all those interfaces on which OSPF process 1 is enabled. Process 1 is enabled except loopback interfaces because MPLS will never get enabled onto loopback interfaces. So now even we can see that MPLS is enabled onto its WAN interface or not. Show MPLS interfaces. You see on S1 by 0 LDP is running. In same manner I will move on R2, I will move under OSPF and then I will say MPLS LDP auto config. And then you can move on R3 as well. You can say MPLS LDP or config. So now show MPLS interface. We will check it out. See LDP peering have came up now. Now you must be able to see R3's loop back in your router's routing table. I mean in the routing table of R1 as well as on R3 you must be able to see the loop back of R1. Now because MPLS is also running, so LFI we will be there, right? So MPLS forwarding table. So to reach 3333, its outgoing label is what? Something. And if R2 receives anything with the label number 17, it will perform popping because PHP is by default enabled. But it will send it out from S1 by 1. Finally, your packet will reach R3. Fine. MPLS is configured. OSPF is configured. I mean, BT has been configured except BGP. We have configured this service provider except BGP. BGP. I'll configure, I'll also configure this BGP as well, right? But before going for that, let me enable rape in between Microsoft CE and this PE1. This is provider edge, right? This is P router and this is once again provider edge router. So let me have the console of Microsoft CE1 first of all now and then of Microsoft CE2. Let's start it from Microsoft CE1 now. Do one thing, go to FA0 by 0, allocate uh, IP address as 1.1 over here. Create loopback interfaces. Sorry. Loopback to 3, 4, 5 show IP interface brief check it out on Microsoft C2 IP address is going to be 2.1 as you can see in diagram loopbacks 
enable rip in between PE1 provider edge 1 and this Microsoft CE1 move on PE1 now see you can even you can allocate its host name as PE1 as well so this is this is what PE1 then uh, move on FA0 by 0 and allocate its IP address as uh, 1.2 We have to configure version and then say 1.0. Router rape version 2, no auto, summary network. So I be rape database. It has enabled over here. Move on PE1. So I be route rape. It has learned all those prefixes, right? And they are installed in its global routing table. Have you understood it or not? Fine. Then in between PE1 and PE2, because PE2 is R3, right? So allocate, uh, I mean, rename it as well. PE2. So on PE1, say router, tell me. BGP 100 you understand router BGP 100 it will pick its router ID automatically it will pick it there will not be any problem right and then after say no BGP default IP v4 unicast No BCP default IPv4 unicast and then after it say address sorry first of all define your neighbor 333 remote AS is what and then 3333 update source is loopback and then say address family IP v4 neighbor activate Finally, move on P2. Say router BCP 100. You understand? And then no BCP default IP V4 unicast. Say neighbor. Neighborship must come up. Now, by default, prefixes can move from RIP into BGP. Will they? Will they go from RIP into BGP automatically? So, for that purpose, you have to perform redistribution. Like on PE1, you are receiving uh, prefixes coming from Microsoft CE1 with the help of RIP. As you can see, so IP route. All of them are there with the help of RIP. Like you can see, so IP route. RIP. Do one thing, redistribute them into BGP. Router, BGP 100 address family IPv4, as you can say, unicast as well, and then say redistribute. Rep. And then check this BGP table. All of them now must be. And one more thing. Now there will be two conditions either this WAN 1.0 will be redistributed into BGP or not. So, what do you want? Do you want to redistribute it into BCP? No. Let's do one thing. Let's exclude this prefix from redistribution, right? I'll redistribute only these five prefixes of customer. For doing that, I'll set this list one. Deny. Then one permit. Route map. Match IP address 1, router, sorry, address family IP, and then you configure this command over here, say, what the name, check this PCP table now, gone, fine, 
now move on r3 you must be able to get all of them onto r3 was that they are there but they are not best reason being next hop was not modified and now it is not reachable from here and in bgp to become best path very first condition is what that your next hop address must be reachable sardeep are you okay with it to make it possible what can you do here either modify its next hop address with the help of route map or use next stop self command because you can also use next stop self command because these all prefixes are redistributed prefixes right so inside bcp address family ipv4 unicast neighbor 3.3.3 .3 and then say next stop remember next stop self will be configured under, under address family mode if you are using address family for your neighbor right then after move on r3 and then you will check its bcp table see now it have become best because now next stop is configured as 1.1.1 but remember that if you are receiving prefixes coming from IPGP neighbor, one of the IPGP neighbor, and you are advertising that towards another IPGP neighbor, then definitely this command will never work. It will never work. And we proved it in BGP. So finally, um, we have received these prefixes onto B2 now. And see, still there is a black hole. Like on R2, you can see that there is no prefix like 10, 10, 10, 10. Is there? onto r2 of course no because we are not running bcp onto r2 then after we have to configure eicrp in between uh, gurgaon site and pe2 so do one thing uh, move on pe2 now and onto its f0 by 0 ip address is going to be 2.2 .2. and then say router eicrp is what is also 100 not of somebody network 192.168.2.0 and then i will move on microsoft c2 i'll configure eicrp 100 itself and then i'll say not a summary and then network 0000 and you will see that now your neighborship will come fine on p2 show ip route all these tense prefixes are there some of them are coming with the help of bcp some of them are coming with the help of eicrp now First of all, I'll take New York site prefixes onto Gurgaon site. So now onto P2, it will be required for me to redistribute BCP back into EICR. So do one thing onto P2 is itself, move inside EICRP 100, say redistribute BCP 100, and then it is mandatory to specify your matrix 1500, 1540, 245, 1 and 15, so now I must be able to see all those prefixes uh, into topology table of ELCRP which were coming with the help of BCP onto this device, right? So to check the to check that show IP ELCRP topology, you can see now uh, they are not there. Have we done some mistake over here? remember that by default bcp do not redistribute internal prefixes i mean all those prefixes which are learned from ibgp neighbor into any igp for doing that router bcp 100 address family ip v4 uh, unicast bcp redistribute internal. once you will configure this command now you see show ip ecrp topology see all of them are there one two three redistributed is not it and now you can find all these prefixes onto microsoft c2 take it out In 
same manner now we have to take your prefixes from gurgaon side to microsoft i mean new york side so of course on p2 you are receiving that with the help of eicrp itself now you are required to receive the eicrp back into bgp on to p2 say router bgp 100 at assembly ipv4 unicast say redistribute eicrp 100 so ip bgp you must get all of them over here and again it will see it will redistribute this uh, 2.0 as well so this time again if i do not configure next hop self then also it will be best on to r1 because now next hop address have been advertised into pgp itself hello this so that is why it is best because next hop is reachable but if i do something like conditional redistribution on to p2 like if i do not want to advertise this 2.0 if I do not want to redistribute this 2.0 into the PGP, then the same problem will occur over there that we saw on to P1. Right? Access list 1, deny 181.68.2.0, and uh, then I, it's, it's, I mean, uh, it's some wildcard mask, then one permit, any, and then after, what can we do? Route map, it's test, and permit one match IP address is one. And then, router bgp is what and then at assembly ipv4 gpass and then redistribute to this route map name is so IP BCP, you must not get that 2.0 now into its BCP table and now on P1 they will not be best because now their next up address is not reachable that's why I just filter out that otherwise uh, uh, of course we, 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 we will have not configured you understand this next up self command onto any provider edge router but this time it was mandatory it was compulsory for us to configure this command because without configuring this command next stop is not reachable that's why i filter it out so on to p2 router bgp 100 address family ip v4 and uh, then i can say unicast neighbor 1.1.1 and then next stop self just after configuring this command under address family now move on our p1 and you will see that And then after you have to redistribute this bc back into rip so say router rate redistribute bcp matric is 2 it's mandatory to specify your matric while you are redistributing into rape but still show ip rape database you will not get that i mean all those prefixes into the database of rip you know by default bcp will not redistribute internal prefixes right so router bcp 100 address family ipv4 unica say bcp redistribute internal just after configuring this command say show ip rape database check it out see all of them all of them are available now six seven eight nine ten everything move back again on microsoft ce1 via rip you must be able to see all of them now but still on to r2 i mean core router of service provider you will not get any one of the route is there tell me fine then after it move on microsoft ce1 and then try to ping with 10.1.6.1 when source is your on do back and repeat have we configured any GRE tunnel so this is happening due to mpls and how will you ensure that okay you are communicating with microsoft ce2 us itself do one thing move on microsoft ce2 and enable tenlet let's take tenlet off when source is
Raji. It confirms that we are communicating with Microsoft CE2 router itself. Say exit, it will come out from here. Now big question is that how traffic is going from here to there and how traffic is coming back from here from there to here. Fine. To understand that it's very easy. See uh, this Microsoft CE2, CE1 actually is preparing packet and in that packet source IP address is 10.1.1. Destination packet, destination IP address was 6.1. This was your packet. First of all, Microsoft CE1 will perform routing lookup in its local routing table. Fine. Now, this CE1 is receiving this prefix coming from, tell me, 1.2, as you can see. So, it will hand over this packet to 1.2. Fine. R1 will receive this packet on 2F0 by 0 now and because it received here unlabeled packet was there any label onto it no it received unlabeled packet and, and i have already told you the rule that if any router receives any unlabeled packet then it will perform lookup in its fib and here it will perform lookup in its global fib global fib because this interface is part of global routing table itself right so it will simply say this r1 show ip ceph uh, 10.1.6.0 and then detail. Are you getting a point or not? Hey, this R1 has received one unlabeled packet onto FA0 by 0, so it has to perform lookup in its FIB. See what's that? That uh, to reach it, next stop is going to be 333 and it is reachable via uh, S1 by 0 and also fast tag rewrite. It means that MPLS is enabled onto, the, onto this interface and it is going to impose label number 70 onto this packet now. So in between layer 2 and layer 3 header, it will put label number 70. It will add this tag, MPLS tag with the label number 70. Fine. And now it will set it out from S1 by 0. So this time R2 will receive labeled packet. R2 will receive, Lip. so it will perform lookup in its LFIB. So MPLS, if it receives anything with label number 17, then it will perform popping and will send it out from S1 by 1. Fine. It's very simple. See how many bytes have been switched with the help of tag. Right? So finally, packet will be delivered on to see R2 have not opened its IP header because R2 have switched your packets based on their label numbers. So finally, R3 will receive it and R3 will receive unlabeled packet. Unlabeled. Unlabeled. Because popping has been already done by R2. So it will perform lookup in its fib to reach. So it is reachable out from and there is no tag switching. See, so it will send unlabeled packet out from this interface. Fine. Whenever packet will come back from there, at that moment source will become first of all, this Microsoft C C two itself will perform routing local. So it is reaching this 10.1.1.1 via 2.2. So it will send this packet towards 2.2. 2.2 is this. R3 will receive this packet onto this F0 F by 0 and uh, unlabeled packet, right? So it will perform lookup in its FIP. So it will say show IP SAP 10.1.0 and uh, now detail. Our going interface is S1 by 0. Next stop is 1111 and tag which has to be imposed onto it is what? 16. So it will again add tag 16 in between layer 2 and layer 3 header before transmitting this packet out from S1 by 0. And then finally R2 will receive it on S1 by 1 with label number 16. So if it receives anything with 16, it, again it has to perform popping and it, ha it has to send it out from S1 by 0. So finally R1 will receive this packet onto S1 by 0 without any label. So it will perform lookup in its FIP and once again R1 will send this packet towards CE1. So in this way traffic is going from c1 to c2 and coming back from c2 to c1 i hope that you people have understood the traffic flow the, the data flow that how 
traffic is going from here to there even r2 do not have anything in its uh, routing table but the thing is like for an example on microsoft ce2 you are doing continuous ping and of course it will be successful but if you move on r2 and then if you say no ip self what is this that's why i said that self is what mandatory because if self is not there alpha will not be there if self is not there then alpha will not be there like you can move on r2 and you can check show mpls routing table find say ip self once you will configure this command that's why i said that self is mandatory Sir, oh, of course, of course, it has to do. In BCP, there will be always recursive lookup because, as it was showing me, right? Where is that? That's what I'm saying. See. Where? This is this one. Of course, it has to perform because you look Because if you check its BCP table, so I so IP route even, even so IP route, right? So there is that okay, 10.1.6 dot uh, six dot is reachable via BCP, but there is no exit interface. That's why. In BCP, you will never see your exit interface. I hope you people have understood it completely. Great. Now, this time, let's assume that there is Yahoo. It is also using same prefixes. What will happen now? Of course, because for P1, there will be only one path will be best path. Either towards Microsoft CE1 or Yahoo CE1 is not it so if they are using same prefixes then this is a big problem now are you getting a point or not that is why we have to use VR. we have to use VR. and then after we have to use mpls vpn as well we have to use mpls vpn till now i'm not using any mpls vpn over here i just implemented mpls i mean bcp along with mpls and it was working fine if you are having only one customer but if you are having more than one customer terminating on a single router and they are using same prefixes then of course there is a big problem now so i hope that you people have understood that why do we require to implement vrf along with mpls sardeep of course there will be a big problem if they are using same prefixes right to solve this problem and i'll be using same prefixes now to solve this problem i'll, I'll start to use vrf any problem now i will start to use vrf fine i don't need to make any change at the end of microsoft ce1 and ce2 because uh, they don't need to do any configuration related to mpls vpn and all because MPLS VPN will be configured at the end of provider only. At the end of, see, customer will never come to know that whether MPLS is enabled or some what, what was going on at the end of service provider. Because uh, at the end of customer, we haven't enabled anything related to MPLS. Right? is used to don't worry to come back <laughs> fine so let's do one thing same asa tumhare class mein to nahi aaye na jab hum wahan pe classes fine I have removed this BCP. I have removed RIP. I will not remove SPF because the SPF will still be required over there, right? Because still you still have to configure indirect neighborship in between two PE provider edge. So SPF will remain there. In same manner on to our P2, no router ECRP. I 
I removed basic as well, right? Fine, guys. So this time here, I'll be using ESRP one only, not 100 actually. I'll be using only one. Fine. So let's start it once again from V1. Let me create one VRF for Microsoft. IP VRF micro. Now this time you are going to have same prefixes into two different VRFs, right? Then how will it be possible for a device to or how will it be possible for BCP to distinguish them? For that purpose, in each VRF we have to use RD. RD is known as route distinguisher. RD is known as route distinguisher. So what is the meaning by distinguisher? I mean which can differentiate? Which can differentiate so rd can be represent i mean will be configured in this format like 16 bits co colon 16 bits you can take any value but remember on a single router on to two different vrfs you cannot configure same rd value let me show you rd is going to be let's say here one is two one then do one thing create one another vrf let's say yahoo Say RD. So you cannot allocate same RD to two different VRF on a single device because of course both VRFs can have same prefixes. Then how will it be possible for them to differentiate them? You understand? So it is mandatory, it is compulsory that on a single device, if you are creating two different VRFs, then make sure that you are allocating it unique RD route distinguisher so again say ip vrf is what micro and then rd is what one is two one fine understood great just come outside show ip vrf have you put any interface on uh, inside this vrf till now no and we know very well that this customer microsoft ce1 i mean microsoft is going to be member of i mean for that customer we are using vrf micro now interface fa0 by 0 is uh, used by customer microsoft so i'll say ip vrf forwarding name is it will remove its ip address as i Said earlier on, allocate it once again. Show IP VRF, check it out. Now, FA0 by 0 is member of VRF micro. Now, in global routing table, it, you will not be able to see 192.168.1.0 because it have become the member of VRF micro. But if you say show IP route VRF micro, this is there. Understood? fine now because this time we are going to configure mpls vpn right in between pe1 and pe2 provider edge in between two provider edges as routers this, this time we are going to configure vpn we will configure vpn right so to configure vpn it's not very difficult in bcp you see because this time vpn will work for vrf right and without vpn you cannot take your vrf prefixes remember bgp can carry prefixes of vrf via vpn only right so actually this bgp sorry this vpn do not belongs to your mpls it belongs to your bgp itself like this router bgp let's say it is 100 of course it was 100 say no bgp default ipv4 unicast even you can also say bgp router id is what and then say neighbor 333 remote as system me the neighbor create address family not ipv4 create in for ipv6 we are having vpn but here we are using vpn i mean ipv4 so vpn v4 only see enter 
that's a neighbor is what activate to configure VPN I mean in this way you will you will configure this VPN right see now you can ask me that why are we going or why is it necessary for us to configure VPN see VPN works same as trunk port like trunk port all VLANs are allowed in same manner prefixes from all VRFs will be allowed via VPN it can allow prefixes with different different route distinguishes values it can allow prefixes with different different route distinguisher values because for each vrf you will allocate a different rd value route distinguisher is not it so move on now r3 router bcp 100 say no bcp default ip v4 unicast idiot address family ip v4 sorry neighbor 1.1.1 remote as is going to be 100 neighbor and address family VPN V4 neighbor. So now you have configured VPN V4 neighborship and it will come up now very soon. Don't worry about that. It will show you it will generate a log masses, is log masses onto the console of both devices. Neighborship how came up. Neighborship how came up. Now show IP VCP something. Is it showing you anything? Because it will show you IPv4 neighborship only, not VPN V4. To see your VPN V4 neighborship, it's very simple. Say so show IP BCP all summary. Check it out. understood there is no vrf sorry there is no neighbor for dedicated vrf like in place of all you could say vrf and then it say does it have anything for a dedicated vrf we do not have any neighbor right now we are having for all that's why we pin v4 and i said that's why i said that this we pin v4 will work as a trunk port hello so we have configured VPN V4 neighborship in between R1 and R3. Fine. Now on P1 we have to configure RIP for VRF micro because RIP is running in between PE and CE. Right now what is running? Oh. RIP in between PE and CE. So do one thing on to R1 say router RIP because you can run only a single process of RIP globally on your device and then do not configure network command do not configure any version command because here you can you have not you haven't run uh you haven't you haven't configured this rip for any vrf now say address only ipv4 vrf name is micro <laughs> of course because I'm using only micro for Microsoft. So I have to configure it for that same VRF only. Of course, you will not configure it for any other VRF. Right? Because for this customer, you are using VRF micro. Are you getting my point or not? Fine. Address only IPv4 VRF micro. And before going to configure this RIP, I would like to show you something. That when you configure VPN v4 neighborship, then it will configure these commands automatically. Like show, run pipe section router busy let me show you i didn't configure this command over here but this command has been configured over here auto like under vpn v4 i just i simply said activate i didn't configure this send community extended but this command will appear automatically and it is mandatory if you do not configure this command then vpn v4 will never work however it will be configured by your ios automatically but if you remove it like in t shoot they can remove it so your VPN will not work. I'll let you know that why is it necessary? Why is it mandatory for us? Fine. And then also I didn't configure, did I create any IPv4? I mean any v, any address only for my VRF into BCP? Did I created any address only for my VRF Microsoft? 
in BGP? Of course, no. But it have created it automatically. See, remember, if your router is having BGP, VPN, V4 neighborship, just try to remember, try to get it. If your router is having BGP, VPN, V4 neighborship, VPN, V4 neighborship is configured onto your device. And then after, if you create any VRF onto your router, it will create address family for that VRF automatically. Just like here. As you can see that I didn't configure address family for this VRF onto this. I mean inside BGP. I didn't configure anything related to this address family, right? But still it have created it automatically. Don't worry about that, right? Now configure rate. To configure rate, it's very simple. Address family IPv4 VRF name is what? Micro. This is for rate. And then say not or summary version to network fine now rape has been configured for VRF micro now inside micro you must start to receive coming uh, all prefixes coming from Microsoft C1 let me show you see in global routing table they will not be anything see but if you say show IP route VRF is what micro let me show you it's same as VRF light it's same as VRF light that's why I told you VRF light light first right now then after these prefixes will never go via BGP without redistribution without of course you have to redistribute this uh, I mean these prefixes from break into BGP so that your prefixes can go through VPN they can go through VPN are you getting my point or not fine then after it you see show NPLS forwarding table is there any change till now is there any change it is like same as we saw earlier on right fine now we are going to redistribute this rip into BGP VPN to do to do that router BGP 100 address family IPv4 unicast VRF name was you will not redistribute it under VPN v4 address family no you will redistribute all these prefixes learned from rip into BGP in its VRF only in its VRF only and that is why BGP, BGP created this address family for this VRF automatically now say redistribute what right that's the only command that you need to put over here now after doing this i mean after configuring this command let me show you show ip bgp vpn v4 all enter so it will show you all that see vrf what micro and its rd value is what one is to one even you can check it out in this manner as well show ip bgp vpn v4 vrf is what micro per vrf if you say all enter then it will show you prefixes i mean bgp table for all vrf it will show you bgp table for all vrfs but this time it will show you bgp table only for one vrf i mean you can specify your vrf as well as you can also use all keyword i hope you people have understood it fine after it because here we have redistributed it right after this redistribution redistribution right even you can also use that route map over here do you remember that i created one route map of test so that the prefix it running in between pe1 and c1 will not get redistributed into pcp hello this 1.0 is not required because only these five prefixes are running in the lane of the microsoft c1 so do one thing at the time of redistribution from break into bgp just exclude it so to do that say router bgp 100 address family and then as you configured redistribute rate say route map test it was already configured over here right so ip bgp vpn v4 vrf micro
Is there any problem now? पॉइंट टू पॉइंट है ना लिख के इसलिए पॉइंट टू पॉइंट करके जरूरत ही क्या मुझे पता है इधर से मैं भेजूंगा उधर रिसीव होगा ओके सो हाउ आई कॉन्फ़िगर्ड एनी नेक्स्ट हॉप सेल्फ कमांड ओवर हियर Now I must say all these prefixes available on R three, P two, so I P B C P V P N V four, all. Yeah. I have not created any V R F O here. And also, let me do one thing. Move back again on P one. Actually, here it is showing you that they are available in. I mean, you have redistributed them, right? But still, these prefixes will never go via V P N. I mean, they will go, but they will not be received by anyone. No one will be able to accept all these prefixes. Even what will I do to prove it? I will capture one link over here. Start capturing, and uh, now from P one, I will say clear IP clear IP BCP VPN V four. Unicast start. BCP VPN V4. Ask to start. See, BCP update must be there. this one right open it <coughs> does it have any prefix over here so actually even in updates it is not advertising its prefixes you got him a point we have proved that r1 is not giving any prefix information to its vpn v4 neighbor so remember that if you are giving just try to remember now this is really crucial point right of this mpl vpn <clears throat> if you are giving or if you are injecting prefixes from vrf into vpn is known as export is known as exporting like you are exporting your prefixes right hello <coughs> if you are giving prefixes i mean if you are injecting prefixes from vrf into VPN, yes. as we did over here. From VRF, we injected these prefixes into VPN by performing redistribution. Are you getting a Are you getting a point? And then, if you are taking routes VPN from VPN back into VRF, is known as import. Same as normal <laughs> export and import. <coughs> Have we understood that when will you call it import and when will you call export? if you are injecting prefixes from vrf into vpn is known as exporting and if you are taking routes taking prefixes from vpn back into vrf is known as importing there are some route target values rt values for export and for import that is that must be mentioned like if you are going to post anything then you must in, you must configure to and from <coughs> you must configure what to and from because to to means your destination address right so wherever destination address will match it will be delivered wherever destination address will match it will be delivered so you are sending your prefixes you are transmitting your prefixes via vpn without allocating its uh, address without allocating that uh, information that who uh, i mean which which router or which uh, person would be able to import these prefixes how can we export that so for doing that you have to allocate export value see remember if you are exporting anything from vrf into vpn then make sure that you have allocated a export route target value you understand so on r1 i didn't configure any export route target values so on to p1 itself go to ip vrf you understand ip vrf name is what micro micro say route target rt route target 
there are two things export as well as import and if you want to use same for both right now we are exporting only right we are not importing anything right so you could also say both as well so that it will use same value for exporting as well as for importing but this time i'm just doing what export so i'll say export is what one is to two let's say i'm doing i'm using here one is two this is like two address to like when you post something then you mention two destination address <coughs> you understand fine this is export rt fine after allocating this export rt you can also see show ip vrf detail rd is this onto this interface is configured and <coughs> export rt is this and now this rt value will always go along with your bgp prefixes as extended community as you can see this export rt will always go along with your bgp prefixes as a extended community that is why that command is mandatory if that command is not configured then it will never be able to carry your rt value along with bgp prefixes in B in bgp updates and this rt value is mandatory that is why that extended community command is automatically configured have you understood it now fine then after if you capture it once again and once again clear it from here and open it <coughs> oh <coughs> what yes but still it is not showing me like uh, yes 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 i mean extended community is there but uh, prefixes are still not there hmm. because the point is on to r3 no one is available to accept them no one is available to accept these prefixes with these rt values route target so it is also mandatory that on far end you must have vrf you must have vrf and also it is not mandatory to use same vrf name like it is not mandatory that on to p2 use same vrf no just say ip vrf let's say its name is what mike RT, it is also not mandatory to use the same as like we used on PE1, but it is recommended to use same one. I will be using different over here, like two is to two. RD, what? Yep, you can use anything, but it is recommended to use same RD values on both ends. RD, this is not RT. This is not route target. This is route distinguisher. You can use anything, but it is always recommended to use same. I will let you know that why is it recommended to use it as same, right? Fine then you have to allocate route target but this time you are importing you are importing and this import value must be same as that you that well i mean that you used at the time of exporting the prefixes into your vpn if you if it is not same then you will not be able to import those prefixes into this vrf so actually it is not depending on the vrf name that which prefixes will get installed your vrf it is depending on your route target values So remember that whatever you used over there at the time of export here you have to use that same rt value for importing the prefixes if you do not use same then it won't be able to import them from vpn into vrf so import is what fine and as i said that it will create address only automatically for it for this vrf because vpn v4 membership is already there so let me show you show run pipe saxon router bcp For Mike. Now let me show you. Show IP BCP VPN V4. All enter. It have received them right. And let me show you update packet as well.
update message is given by 1 2 3 see you understand even I think older update was also containing this thing right let me open that as well once again the older older update older update where was that see it was also containing but at that moment see rt was also there extended come in extended community right rt was also there prefixes were going there but over there you didn't created any vrf you didn't configure any route import value that is why far end was not having those prefixes in its bgp table understood now we configured here for i mean we configured vrf right and you can say show ip route vrf is what in vrf mic not in global routing table check it out it's not available in global routing table but the problem is show ip bgp vpn v4 vrf mic but if you say all vpn v4 all there are multiple entries there are duplicate entries for same prefixes one is coming with that we configured on to r1 and here we configure them with rd value i mean here we configure this uh, vrf with rd value 2 is to 2 so there is no problem with routing and all but there are duplicate entries so they will be highly higher memory consumption they will be higher memory consumption because they are coming with rd value 1 is to 1 but here we configured as 2 is to 2 however it has to receive it because we configure same route target value for importing so there are duplicate entries now to do not have duplicate entries it is recommended to, to use same rd value and it is not very easy to use i mean to change your rd value ip vrf is mic say ip sorry rd is what one is to one same as previously what is it saying that remove previous one so you have to say rd2 is to two sorry no and then say rd1 is to it will not take it immediately what is it saying deletion of rd is in progress so you have to do it i don't know exactly accepted it right and then after you can say clear bcp vpn v4 unicast star in stack show ip bcp vpn v4 all there will be only one entry now see <coughs> sorry is there any duplicate entry now tell me and show ip route there is nothing but if you say here you create vrf with the name of my it will take some time but finally all those prefixes will be available in its routing table don't worry about that if they are available in the bcp table then definitely they will also be available in its routing table as well don't worry about that they will come but then after let me show you some other changes as well i hope that you people have understood all this concept till now because it was so easy and i'm going just step by step i'm just going through step steps right it's not like that i'll, I'll just configure it without any reason move on our v1 so i hope that you people have understood the uses of rt value route target and this rt value will always go along with bgp updates as extended community that is why that command is mandatory that i was configured automatically just after configuring vpn v4 neighborship <coughs> 
so uh, <coughs> after going through all these things on v1 itself i redistribute it i redistribute it right into vcp remember that whenever your prefixes will be injected from vrf into vpn of course over here on p1 you injected your prefixes like 10.1.0 2.0 3.0 4.0 slash 24 5.0 slash 24 these five prefixes into vpn do you remember which we we injected five prefixes from vrf into vpn so npls you see show ip pcp vpn v4 all as you can see over here five prefixes right at same moment you check its mpls forwarding table as well show mpls forwarding table these five prefixes <coughs> see once your prefix will be injected from vrf into vpn immediately its entry will also be created in its local lfib lfib this is local forwarding information i mean label forwarding information base lfib label forwarding information base and for all those prefixes which have moved from vrf into which have been injected from vrf into vpn it will create a label as you can see local but outgoing is what untagged because uh, hey guys it is having these prefixes in its lfib and before that it was not having any label i mean these prefixes were not coming with any label hello microsoft is is microsoft c1 giving these prefixes to bcp with any label that's why outgoing label is what untagged hello hey you have redistributed it onto agar sir fine so this v specify vpn label or you can say like vrf vpn or vr whatever you want right so you can see that for it its exit interface is what fa0 by 0 and next stop is what 1.1 1 .1. because exit interface is fa0 by 0 remember that if your exit interface is ethernet port then next stop address will always be mentioned over there always like as you said that on point to point next stop is never mentioned right of course for point to point it is not necessary but if it is multi-point interface then it is mandatory to specify your next stop address as well Fine. Then and this label is not been generated by LDP. This label has been generated by VPN, BGP VPN V4. This label has been generated by VPN V4. That's why this V is specified. I mean, is is there? Remember whenever you will inject again i'm repeating my this line because this is really important right whenever you will inject prefixes from vrf into vpn then vpn and i mean bcp vpn will also generate a label for it as you can see over here and this is what local label this is what local, local label as you can see so now if you open its bcp table for vpn v4 for this prefix like show ip bcp vpn v4 unicast and then the dot 1.0 dot enter uh unicast vrf is what micro and then 10.1.0 dot dot because here on p1 i'm using vrf name as micro so you see in the label because this is local label right this is what local label that is why it will be under in so it has generated label number 21 for 10.1.1.0 as you can see show mpls forwarding table here as well see label number sorry this one 19 it's not it and here also it was showing me ah oh, sorry it is for 10.1.0 so this is 10.1.0 
guys see it is proved now that it has created label for it vpn label right now it is having vpn v4 neighborship with with r3 so it will give this label to r3 and for r3 this label will become outgoing label same as ldp Hello. if it is giving this label to pe2 now as you can see but you will not be able to see that in its lfib no you won't be able to see that in its lfib because that was generated by vpn not by ldp that label was generated by vpn and you are having those prefixes in your vpn only right so check it out show npls sorry show bgp vpn v4 unicast all or you can say vrf mic 10.1.0 so that label number 21 or 22 21. 21 must be here outgoing label now you understand and because this is in vrf mic if you check ceph table now ceph onto this p2 show ip ceph vrf mic for which prefix in ceph how many labels have to be imposed now two 16 and 21 inner label will always be your vpn label so as you can see to reach 10.1.0 outgoing label was 21 so it is inner label outer label will always be your ldp label because to reach next stop next stop is what and here next stop self was not required right because in vpn v4 next stop self is already configured for i mean like you can see over here right redistributed prefixes next stop self is not required to configure over here right so as you can see that next stop is already 1111 so one label 16 is just to reach your next stop and this 21 will is, is is your vpn label there are two labels now ldp label and vpn label ldp will be outer label and inner label will be your vpn label you understand so finally show ip route vrf is what mic you have received on p to all these prefixes in your vrf mic and this time you have to configure EIC RP in between. In between, yes, R3, or we, you can also call it PE2 and Microsoft CE2. So let's configure EIC RP at EIC RP1, right? So at the end of Microsoft, Microsoft CE2, hello, no router EIC RP100, say router EIC RP. This time I have to configure EIC RP1, not or something network. This is at the end of customer. Custom don't customer will never require to do any extra configuration. But if you move on R3 now, Router, ICRP, one hundred or one thousand. Now you will say, sir, how will it be possible to form neighborship? See, this is the global process. Now inside it, you have to create a test family for IPv4. We are name is, and then after you have to define your autonomous system in it. And this AS number must match with your neighbor is so here now neighborship must come up for vrf i think i haven't put this interface into vrf yet i'll be vrf God. 
I didn't configure this controller. Now it will delete it. Now maybe she will also come up. For VRF, as you can see, show IP as ERP name. Is it showing you anything over here? Now say show IP as ERP VRF. My name. I will show you. And then show IP route. Here it won't it won't show you anything. But if you say show IP route VRF my some prefixes are coming via BGP and some of them are coming from ESERP. Now you have to distribute prefixes from BGP into ESERP so that you can get them onto Microsoft CE2. Do one thing. Yes. This is called MP BCP that you saw in Wireshark as well. That prefixes were going under MP BGP, multi protocol BGP. Router SGRP 1000, say address family IPv4, VRF is what? My say redistribute BGP is what? 100. Then it is mandated to specify your Now you will say, sir, re during redistribution, we didn't define VRF. Why do we require to define VRF as we have already we have already entered into VRF? So we are already inside VRF mic. So in VRF mic, we are redistributing BCP into ESERP. So of course, only those prefixes will get redistributed into ESERP, which are which are present into the VRF mic via BCP. Finally, move on. Try it out. Check it out. All of them are available over here. Right? After it, again you have to redistribute this ESRP back into BGP. So on to R3C, show MPLS forwarding table. Still there is no prefix, right? Is there? Because on to this device, I have not injected anything from VRF into VPN. So for doing that, first of all, show IP VRF detail. I have to put any RT value for exportation, for exporting, right? So IP VRF, mic, route target for exporting different ways to one. So over there it will be used as a import one. Then after you do one thing, router BCP, address family IPv4, VRF, tell me, say redistribute, one. To check your redistribution, say show IP. BCP, VPN, V4, all enter. Is not it? If you wanna, if you don't want to redistribute this 2.0, which is running in between P2 and C2, do one thing: router BCP 100 to go to address family, and during redistribution, say route map is already there. Test. I already created. It. Show route map. Show IP BCP VPN V4 VRF is what? Mike, you can also check your BCP table per VRF as well. See, all of them have redistributed 6 to 10. Fine, guys. Then it will advertise it towards now PE1. Show IP BCP. As you can see, all as well. <laughs> but still, it's not there because we have not configured any RT value over here. So it is mandatory to configure RT for importing prefixes from VPN into. And, and one more thing that I would like to show you over, over here on R3, I mean on P2, just after performing redistribution, right? I mean just after, after, just after injecting prefixes from VRF into VPN. Let me show you. Show MPLS forwarding table, same as P1. For all those prefixes, it has also created some VPN 
flavors. And now these labels will also go along with MPBGP updates. So for PE1, these labels will become outgoing labels. Because these are local labels for it, right? For to, uh, so that so that for its VPN V4 neighbor, these labels will become outgoing label. Hello. So finally, let P want to receive them for doing that. Say IP VRF is what micro route target for importing is what, and then you can say clear BGP VPN V4 Unicast star in check show IP BGP VPN V4 all. All of them are there. Next stop have been have modified automatically. Understood? Hello. Show IP and, and you see show MPLS forwarding table. In its LFI, there will not be any entry for 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10. Because here you didn't inject them from VRF into VPN. Right? Here you injected only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from VRF into VPN. That is why you are having those entries into its LFIP. And I will let you know that why is it necessary to have over here, right? Fine, guys. Then after it, you can check routing table. So if you route VRF micro, you will receive some prefixes coming from with the help of BGP. See? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Understood? Then further, you have to redistribute the BGP back into RIP. So router. And here, BGP redistribute internal is also not required. That command BCP redistribute internal is also not required if you are redistributing from BCP into any IGP now. Now, because in BGP you learned them with the help of VPN, it was not exact IBCP neighbor. This time it is IBCP VPN V4 neighbor. Router rape address family IPv4 VRF is what? Micro say redistribute BCP is what? 100 metric is what? 1. Now you must be able to see them onto Microsoft CE1 and then you will see that communication have started. Now, question is that how communication is happening? In same manner, I will teach you, right? That, that I explained the data flow in previous, uh, previous just before configuring this uh, VRF. See, first of all, it has to look up for the destination. Destination was, tell me. This packet will arrive on to R1 without any label. So R1 will receive this packet onto its FA0 by 0 with the label number or without label. Without label. Hello? Of course. Because it is coming from customer, so it will come with, I mean, this packet will come without any label. So it will receive it unlabeled. But this interface is part of VRF micro. Hello. So this time this PE1 is receiving this packet onto its FA0 by 0 inside VRF micro. Sardeep, this time it is not receiving this packet inside global routing table. This time it is receiving it inside VRF micro. So it will perform lookup in the SAP table of micro of VRF micro so it will say show ip saf vrf micro for prefix it will impose two labels now one is vpn label one is ldp label one is vpn label one is ldp label because as i show as i show you here this is what vpn route head means this is vpn route it means that hey this 10.1.6.0 is coming here with the help of vpn right inside this vrf micro so there will be outgoing label because this label have been generated by p2 hello p2 generated this label actually for 10.1.6.0 this label number is what 23 hey guys move on here for 6.0 Local level is 23, so it is giving to its P, uh, I mean neighbor P1. Mm. So for P1, it have become outgoing level. And 17 is just to reach next stop. 17 is just to reach your next stop, which is 3333. 
so it will send this packet out from s1 by 0 with the two labels 17 and 20, 23 17 will be 17 will be top label top label and 23 will be inner label fine now r2 will receive this packet it will open first label show mpls forwarding table with the label number 17 17 means it will perform tag i mean poppy it will remove 17 and will send it out from s1 by 1 but still there was one another label was existing so still r3 will receive this packet onto s1 by 0 and it will be labeled packet because one label was still there and that label number was 23 so if it receive anything with the label number 23 it will send it out from fa0 by 0 towards next of 2 dot 1 which is it's not it then packet will come back from there to here it will receive that packet onto f0 by 0 destination will be 10.1.1.1 right yes. so it will receive it unlabeled so it has to perform lookup in itself for vrf mic so now r3 will perform lookup in itself fib for vrf mic hello because fa0 by 0 of p2 is in vrf mic so ip vr so ip self vrf mic then dot one dot zero this time inner label is what and outer label is what 21 this 21 is vpn label 16 is what ldb label for next stop so this and it will send it out from s1 by zero so finally r2 will receive it onto s1 by one and r2 will receive it with the label number 16 so if it receive anything with the label number 16 will send it out from it will not open its ip header will send it out for out from s1 by zero it means that now r1 will receive it and again it will receive it with the label with the label number tell me 21 so if p1 receives anything with the label number sorry 21 will send it out from s f0 by 0 towards next of 1 dot 1 so finally packet will be delivered on to are you getting a point or not so in this way your traffic is going from one side to another side so i hope that you people have understood it right and now let me show you that okay there are two labels now of course because there was untagged outgoing label was untagged you you can see that otherwise how will it be possible for okay Yes, Check it out. Source is in dot one dot one. How many labels are there? Two. Hello. One is seventeen. Seventeen is outer. Just after layer two, and then. 17 is having as, as bit as 0 because it is also having one more label and then final label is having as bit as 1 means it is the last label before IP had tell me so I hope that now you people have understood it that how traffic is going from one side to another side with the help of NPLS. That is why I told you at that moment during BGP that over there you will not require to configure your GRE tunnel. However, still prefixes will not be available onto your code. Traffic is still going through it, right? See, traffic is still going through this core device and there is no prefix available in its routing table. So now your code have become BGP free code. You are not required to configure BGP onto your core device. You are just required to configure BGP only on Edge devices. P routers, not P routers. And of course, it's using fast switching. Then, now, you do one thing, move on Microsoft CE1 and then you can trace out 10.1 and one more thing. If you try to communicate with 10.6.1 now, it will not be able to communicate with it. See, ping 10.1.6.1 because you do not have reverse path. Hey, in source it will take 1.1, 191.68.1.1. So you have to put your source as loopback 1 because you didn't redistribute it there when networks.
fine uh, okay then you can also trace out it 10.1.6.1 when source is loop back so it is showing you that okay it is going through 12.1.2 as well which is not good if you want to hide your mpls domain now if you want to hide your mpls domain stop your ttl propagation for doing that go to p1 As I have already taught you, uses of this command. Now, see <laughs> what is it? See, one dot two, which is PE one customer and device, and this is also customer and IP two dot two. See, entire MPLS domain has hidden. Mr. Amiya, are two pairs R one, R two, R three. Previously, it was showing me this 12.1.2, which is the core device IP. It's not it. And this time, it is showing you only this IP 1.2 and this out from exit interface IP address 2.2. whenever you will inject anything from vrf into vpn it will generate its label if it does not put that entry into its local show mpls forwarding table if it does not put this these entries over here then it will receive packet onto s1 by 0 coming from core router p router how will it be possible for this router to know that okay i have to send this packet out from fa0 by 0 in vrf because this s1 by 0 is part of global routing table are you getting my point or not that is why it is mandatory to have these entries in its LFIB because traffic is see traffic just try to think in perspective of traffic is going from VRF into global and back from global to VRF is not it 